Hello everyone, uh, my name's uh, Stuart Abbott, um, I'm the Head of Pharmacy Terminology Development at NHS Digital, which means I'm responsible for the team at NHS Digital that produces the NHS Dictionary of Medicines and Devices, as well as the SNOMED CT UK Drug Extension. So I've got a, got a few slides to go through here, I'm happy to take any questions, um, sounds like best to take them at, at the end since we're doing a bit of a recording. But uh, other than that, I will crack on. So what is DM plus D? Well, it's the NHS Dictionary of Medicines and Devices. And it's effectively a, di a dictionary of descriptions and codes that represent medicines and devices in use across the NHS. It's a terminology, which means it's a body of terms using a particular technical application. Um, its ownership is at the Department of Health and we deliver it through a partnership between NHS Digital and the NHS Business Services Authority. So originally it started um, post-1998, there was a government white paper, Information for Health, um, which basically said there's a complete lack of standardization in the UK of how descriptions are organized, linked, etc., etc. Out of that came a program, the UK Clinical Products Reference Source, um, which amongst other things delivered the initial sort of starting bits for DM plus D. So that was around also the ability to transfer code information between systems without translating data, um, reducing maintenance of multiple code sets, et cetera, et cetera, all in the name of reducing cost and improving clinical safety. So DM plus D has always been a revolution, not an evolution. The implicit did not evolve from previous terminologies. It was revolution and it was created from scratch. So it's not based on any of the previous NHS read terminologies. Um, it shares very little with them other than it's trying to describe the same thing. So it is very much a revolutionary rather than evolutionary, which is why it doesn't sort of work well with the other read ones because it is brand new. Um, so this is a slide we show people all the time. This shows what we call the DM plus D data model, also known as the five box model. And what you can see on here are the five main, what we call concept classes of DM plus D. So things like the VTM, the virtual therapeutic moiety, which would be just something like just amoxicillin. No strength or form, just the name. Below that, we've got the VMP, the virtual medicinal product. That's name, strength, form, amoxicillin 500 milligram capsules. And then below that on the left, the actual medicinal product, or AMP. This will often be branded products, in this case, amoxil 500 milligram capsules supplied by GlaxoSmithKline. And on the right-hand side of the model, we've got the two pack concepts, the virtual medicinal product pack, or VMPP, so in this case, it'd be amoxicillin 500 milligram capsules, a pack of 21 capsules, and then the equivalent actual medicinal product pack below that, or AMPP. So in this case, amoxil 500 milligram capsules supplied by GlaxoSmithKline in a pack of 21 capsules. And that is effectively the data model, the structure of DM plus D. And each of those five concept classes have different use cases. And so things like the, if you're in primary care, you're normally prescribing at VMP or AMP, um, but things like the GTIN, the barcode, the bit that's printed on a pack is linked to the AMPP because we need to know who supplied it and what size. So that's kind of a basic introduction to the model. If you want to get technical, and if you want to see more about it, we do also publish a far more detailed model so that shows effectively all the different data fields in DM plus D. Obviously not all of those are mandatory. Not all of those have to be populated every single time. But it shows you there is much more in DM plus D than just those five bits of the data model. So moving on, how does DM plus D link to SNOMED CT? So if we look on this sort of uh, model here, you can see there we've got the five boxes there, the VTM, the VMP, the VMPP, the AMPP, and the AMP. 
the sort of green lozenge at the bottom is dm plus d and the triangle going upwards is snowman ct now things that are wholly within the green lozenge will be in snowman ct because everything in dm d is in snowman ct but the things that are solely in the green lozenge will only be in the snowman ct uk drug extension so that's the bit that only exists in the UK namespace. So that things that are VMPPs, AMPs or AMPPs will only ha ever have a UK namespace Snowman CT identifier. VMPs and VTMs sit on the boundary. So some of those will have a UK one, some of those will have an international one. But the link that goes through is the VMPs are linked to the VTMs. Most of the VTMs sit in the international release of SNOMED CT rather than the UK drug extension. And it is the VTMs that then normally have the relationship to the next level up in the SNOMED CT international release. So in this example, we've got the VTM nifedipine, VTM is a calcium channel blocker, is a cardiovascular drug is a etc 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 and so it gets all the way to the top of the product hierarchy and ultimately all the way to the root node of SNOMED CT. So that is how DM plus D links through into the UK into SNOMED CT. So one of the things to note about DM plus D is that it contains both a text and a code. And it's a standardized, unique description for each entry. And it's important to say in DM plus D that we do not do synonyms. We do not have search terms. We do not have additional terms in DM plus D. The only additional term we do have is an abbreviated label name. whose sole use cases for printing on labels in a pharmacy who's dispensing things. Other than that, there is no synonyms, there's none of the SNOMED fully specified name, preferred terms, synonyms. In DM plus D, there is one current description. And then there's a, a code. Now, the code for DM plus D for all those five products, main product classes, and the number of additional fields is always a SNOMED CT code. Now, we get a lot of questions between people about how do I map between DM plus D and SNOMED? And the answer is you don't because there is no map because it's the same set of codes. Um, so if you take the code from DM plus D, here we have paracetamol 500 milligram tablets. You look that up in a DM plus D enabled system. It will be there. You'll get that description back. If you look it up in a SNOMED enabled system, it will come back because it's the same concept and the DMC description will be one of potentially many SNOMED descriptions. But it is the same set of codes, so it doesn't necessarily matter what you're getting those codes from, as long as it's a DMC code that exists in SNOMED. And there are various ways, including ref sets, to identify those. So what isn't DM plus D? Well, one of the things DMPD is not, it's not a computer system. It's not decision support in and of itself. There is no decision support in DM plus D. It contains no information about contraindications, um, about adverse reactions, about dosages, about age ranges, diseases. But it does provide sufficient hooks to allow a decision support system to be added to DM plus D. So currently the NHS itself does not provide a decision support system, but there are plenty available in the outside world. So DMC doesn't do decision support. So moving on, how is DMC updated? Well, we get service requests from a variety of different places. We have a number of service desks. We get it from suppliers, manufacturers, end users, system supplies, CCGs, CSUs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone can request updates to DM plus D. Anyone can contact us via the service desk. For those manufacturers who are signed up, 
There's also a system called in-demand that allows direct submitting of structured data um, via effectively a web portal. Um, it does a bit of checking and that then drops directly into our our authoring system and streamlines a lot of work. That's only for manufacturers who are signed up to do that. And obviously they do that when they're making changes, bringing new products on, taking products off, changing prices, that sort of thing. Um, so how many updates do we get to DM plus D? Uh, these figures are correct as of April 2017, which is DM plus D release 4.0.0 2017. Just give you some idea of both the number of concepts in DMCD at the five main concept classes and the number of concepts we are adding on each week. And obviously there's a range because some weeks are work, some weeks we do more, some weeks we do less. But it gives you an idea that DM plus D is quite large. There's a lot of figures in there. Now we do release DM plus D effectively in two different versions. It's released every week in an XML format. Um, and then it's released every four weeks as part of the Snowman CT UK drug extension. And what we do is we take the weekly DM plus D XML, that is then transformed internally and used to create the Snowman CT UK drug extension where we add on any necessary um, Snowman specific information, including a, an extra concept class called Trade Family which contains brand information. Both of these are released via the TRUD website, which is our standard method for uh, distributing information, and the link is there. Uh, just to be clear, obviously, the DMC is updated by both NHS Digital and the NHS BSA, um, and we're both involved in that. So, one thing I want to make clear, and anyone who's ever heard or worked with anyone in DMC before, um, why is the DM plus D logo like this? What's that green cross doing in the middle of DM plus D? And why is it DM plus D, not DM and D, or DM ampersand D, or anything else? Well, the green cross is a common symbol, um, particularly across Europe, but also across a lot of the world, for a pharmacy. So the green cross in DM plus D is representing pharmacy. Uh, so that's why the DM plus D logo is DM plus D. And I would always ask anyone that whenever you write it, it's always lowercase, all of it, even if it's at the start of a sentence, and it's always a plus in the middle. And it is also a registered trademark, so that's why we always encourage people to write it that way, uh, rather than doing anything else. So, where is DM plus D at the moment? Well, The Power of Information was published in May 2012, which supported the use of DM plus D um, as the standard along with SNOMED CT to go forward in the NHS. DM plus D is also included in the NIB framework 2020 about adopting SNOMED CT in the NHS by April 2020 at the latest and as DM plus D uses SNOMED CT codes it's entirely compatible with that. DM plus D is also involved in a number of the Carter reports. It's about accurate coding of medicines. And there's a hospital pharmacy transformation program going on. That's the 3A recommendation at the top about moving everyone over to using DM plus D. Um, so we don't have to translate. We can gather accurate figures and statistics because we're all recording in the same way. DM plus D is also a sky standard. Um, it's Sky Standard 0052, um, and effectively the Sky Standard is a standard that supports interoperability, which means if your information about medicines that relate to a patient, so basically clinical information about medicines are leaving a system, it should be coded using DM plus D identifiers and descriptions. Um, and the compliance date for that was the 30th of June 2017. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means if you're communicating coded information about medicines, this code must be DM plus D. It should also use the DM plus D description. So what happens if I don't comply with the standard? Well, ultimately right now, it's not being policed. 
You know, we're not we're not sending people around and saying you have to update your system now, otherwise you will be in breach of the Health and Social Care Act 2012, which contains penalties about this, blah 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 blah, um, Section 250, etc., etc., etc. But we are saying to people, but if you don't do it and something goes wrong, if you communicate information about medicines and you don't use DM plus D, and that causes harm to a patient, that's going to reduce your defence. You're going to be left in a very exposed position when it goes to the coroner's court, and they say, well, why weren't you using the standard? If you use the standard, it might have prevented this harm. It's going to be difficult and more difficult to defend that. So what we're saying is to care organisations is from, the, from June, you shouldn't be procuring new systems that don't support the standard. If you've got existing systems, well, we're not going to come knocking down your door just yet, but you need a plan. When are you going to move to them? When is the system's next up for re-procurement? Is there anything you can do in the meantime? Have you understand what you're doing? Um, now, what it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you have to pull out your entire system and start afresh. How it's implemented is entirely up to the system, the use cases of the system, and the risks of the system. Um, so you can just map to it, you can just replace it, or you could start afresh brand new. That is entirely up to um, basically the owners of the system. The standard doesn't require anything else. All the Sky documentation course is online. You can see it all there. I can circulate these slides afterwards with the, the links in place. So moving on, we have a few use cases of DMT. I just wanted to uh, show you. Obviously, the electronic prescription service um, release two. It's these figures. I've got are a bit old, but they've moved up a bit now. But in about April, there were EPS release two was alive in about 99.3% of pharmacies, 90% of GP practices, about 59% of claims are being made via EPS. Um, and in March 2017, there are over 52 million items claimed by EPS, and since each item uses at least the DIM code at least three times, that means there is an awful lot of use of DM plus D codes in EPS alone. And obviously, uh, DM plus D is also in use in GP to GP, SCR, uh, quality outcomes framework, enhanced services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's in use in a lot of different places. How is it used in EPS? Well, if you're a prescriber, um, the EPS requirement is you can only pick a VMP or an AMP as a prescriber. So if you're sending a message as a prescriber, you can only put in something with the VMP or the AMP concept class. If you're a primary care dispenser in EPS, the dispense message, the reimbursement message, the claim message, can be any, or any of those, the VMP, AMP, VMPPP or AMPP. So in EPS, they don't have to, or rather they can't message a VTM at all. They have to use one of the other contact classes, which is fine. The VTM is mainly to support secondary care prescribing. So how are we doing in secondary care? At the moment, each, each the Carter recommendation is about ensuring things are being coded, therefore to ensure that we can report things accurately. And we all know when we say we paid this much for this packet that we're talking about the same thing because it was coded in DM plus D. Now, so some of that focus is mainly on high cost drugs first because obviously being high cost drugs, they cost the most um, and potentially the most change. So trusts are moving forward to ensure that DM plus D drug codes are part of all that requirements. Also done some work with a quality outcomes framework which is a framework in uh, primary care to ensure GPs are paid correctly. Um, I won't go through this in a lot of detail unless people want to know about it, but effectively these are two of the QOF clusters um, about payment, and some of these QOF clusters include pulling information about drugs. Now, in read, we'd say if your patient meets the requirements of that QOF and they've got any of these read codes recorded, you'd get paid. So those are six read codes. And obviously the read codes from the last release of read drugs, which was in 1st of April 2016, 
so last year. Now in DM plus D, we, there are far more. We've picked out more of those, and we've got many more Pidagrel products in, so that should be giving us better and more accurate information. There's a similar thing with anticoagulant drugs. We've pulled out more of those, and we've got more VMPs and AMPs than we had in Reed, because DMC is a much richer. How do we share these with people? Currently, they're released in the SNOMED CT UK drug extension. Um, so they're all available either via TRUD, you can find our information via DD4C, which is Data Dictionary for Care. We also publish a human readable version of those in an Excel spreadsheet. Obviously, they're not intended for use in systems, but you can use them for viewing, supporting research, etc. if you want to see what's in those. So ref sets are a way of, or another way of chunking up the vast amount of information that's in DMSD and SNOMED, C and SNOMED CT to pick out bits of information. And again, they obviously all go back out via TRUD, but you can also see them in our SNOMED CT browser, which is a term browser at nhs.uk, which supports viewing of all the uh, UK drug ref sets as well as the UK clinical ones. And obviously, we've got a wide variety of different QOF ref sets that we've published to support things like this. Two pages there.